Hi, I'm Glenn Mitchell from the Lights Right digital photography site, and I want to welcome you to a new video series, Color. It's all relative. Part 1, Introduction. We're going to take a long look at color in this video series. We're going to look at it under the hood, so to speak. My project is to share practical knowledge about basic color theory from the perspective of photographers, especially digital photographers. Here's the problem that this video series is trying to solve. How does the information in a digital photograph's file relate to the kind of adjustments that we can make with a program like Photoshop? Digital cameras and scanners tend to represent color using RGB. Now, RGB is an abbreviation that stands for red, green, and blue. Computers take the information in a file for a digital photograph and then try to display it on a computer monitor. Well, going back to the days of cathode ray tubes, which have a red gun, a green gun, and a blue gun in order to make pixels on, for example, a television screen, computers have also tended to represent colors in terms of RGB, red, green, blue. Very few of us, however, think of color in terms of RGB values. I doubt anyone who watches this video series will look at the red boathouse and think in terms of, oh, those red values, they must have a red value of X, a green value of Y, and a blue value of Z. Instead, you look at it and you think in terms of, those are saturated reds. They have a tendency to pop out at you. They have a lot of intensity to them. And they're also on the darker side of red. That's how, as photographers, we tend to think of color. So here we see the typical color panel in Photoshop. We can use this to create a color swatch that could be used, for example, with the brush tool to brush in some color. And by default, Photoshop will display the values in terms of red, green, and blue and give us sliders to yank around in order to change the color of the swatch. But Photoshop's a very flexible tool. We can change from representing the color as red, green, blue for picking a swatch, and we could change that instead to something that's closer to how photographers would deal with color in terms of hue, saturation, and brightness. Here we have a nice visual way of seeing the problem that I'm trying to attack. The Photoshop Hue Saturation dialog gives us sliders for hue, saturation, and lightness. As we adjust those sliders, what will be the impact on the actual information that's stored in the file for this digital photograph? Because the information will be stored as red, green, blue values, not as hue, saturation, lightness values. If you take a moment and you look at the hue saturation dialog and you compare it with the color panel, you can see that the Adobe software engineers played a mean little trick on us. The hue saturation dialog talks about lightness as the third component. Whereas when we're making color swatches, it's done in terms of hue, saturation, and brightness. Now you might think that lightness and brightness are the same thing. They're not. Those are two different color models. But rather than explain the difference, I'm going to avoid academic kinds of discussions in this video series. I'm not a color engineer. Some of us can handle the calculus that would be involved. Some of us can't. As digital photographers, we want to know how to use tools like Photoshop to improve our photographs. And color is an important component that we need to master. There will be times when I have to use a bit of jargon. And when I do, I'm going to try to use everyday language to explain what the terms mean. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that lightness and brightness are not exactly the same thing. We're going to talk a lot about the HSL model in this video series. The HSL model takes color and represents it in three dimensions, hue, saturation, and lightness, the very same three components on the Adobe Photoshop hue saturation dialog. So we can take any color and we can break it down into three distinct components. Hue, which is the tint of the color. Saturation, it's the intensity. Sometimes people will say the purity component, color. And lightness, that's the tone component, color. What we'll find is that from the perspective of a photographer, the most important piece of information in color is the lightness component. That's not to say that hue and saturation are unimportant. Make a big change in the hue component and colors change dramatically. Increase the saturation, colors will have more pop. Decrease the saturation, they'll be less intense. But it's lightness. How light or how dark the colors are, especially when we place colors relatively close to each other, that has the biggest impact on our photographs. And so we'll spend a lot of time talking about lightness and its effects in this video series. Now back to this question of lightness versus brightness. To the layman, to the digital photographer, those two things are synonymous. They mean the same thing. When we talk about lightness and brightness, we're generally talking about the same thing. How light or how dark something is. Color engineers, on the other hand, 
make a distinction between lightness and brightness. So there are a couple of competing models out there. One is called HSL, Hue, Saturation, and Lightness, and that's the way Photoshop works with colors when you use something like the Hue Saturation dialog, and the HSB model, which stands for Hue, Saturation, Brightness. Sometimes people refer to it as the HSV model, Hue, Saturation, and Value. Brightness and value are synonyms in that context. Now, if you work with painting programs, if you're a graphic artist, you're probably going to be more familiar with the HSV model with hue, saturation, and value than you will be with the HSL model. That's okay, and I'm not going to talk about the difference between them and show you spherical models or something like that. Again, I want to avoid all of that kind of technical discussion here. The hue saturation dialog in Photoshop is a convenient way of being able to work with the components of color in a way that's natural to photographers. We can talk about color in terms of its tint, its intensity, and its tone. In the next video in this series, I'm going to talk about what is color.